All right, and welcome to another exciting episode of Sports Bears from an Agent's Perspective. You're with your host, Zila, a.k.a. Chester Mbekela. And uh, yeah, man, welcome to, I guess, what you'd call this year's, um, I don't want to say season finale, but, you know, podcast finale, yeah, for the year, man. Um, Yeah, this will be our last episode for the year, for 2024. And uh, yeah, we definitely will be reconvening um, again in 2025. Um, As I said, you know, in the episodes leading up to this one, that, um, yeah, we would be taking just a short break, maybe about two months at most, because, um, yeah, there's a lot of work to do in terms of, you know, preparing for the transfer window, the January transfer window within soccer that will be starting. I mean, most teams are starting to get into the negotiation process. Most, you know, sporting directors are starting to ask for, <clears throat> excuse me, for, you know, players to check out and so forth and so forth. So it's um it's a busy time. It's a busy time. Sorry, man, if my camera angle is a little bit off. I apologize for that. Um, yeah, so we're going to be wrapping it up today, man. It's episode 160. You know, I promised that we would at least, you know, fight to get to 160 episodes. So we're finally here with episode 160. So, um, yeah, man, we just, um, as much as it's going to be sort of like a wrap up, you know, sort of like show for the year. Um, yeah, we're just, we're going to touch on, you know, different sports and stuff, but obviously keeping the main focus being mostly, you know, um, professional football and professional rugby. You know, hence, you know, since I am a rugby agent in both those sporting codes. So that's what it is, man. That's what it is. Um, it's been it's been a good year. It's been a busy year. Very busy. Um, but otherwise, no complaints. No complaints. It's been a good sporting calendar year. But before we get into, you know, the whole sporting scene and stuff like that, I just want to give a, a quick shout out to... Um, you know, our sponsors, man, um, brand partners that we've been partnered with since, um, I think, Nike, Australia Nike Corporation. It's been about two years now. So shout out to them. Thank you to them for continuing to rock with us. And if you haven't, if I haven't told you already, or if you haven't heard already, the Nike, the Nike Cyber, you know, Black Friday sale is now on. And I will make sure to drop the link Um of their sale in the description of the podcast. And it will also be available on the Linktree link that we will provide where we encourage you to shop from our brand partners. Um, yeah, shout out to them. And I mean, Nike, they've released, obviously, their seasonal change, um, you know, merchandise. I mean, on this side of the world, Northern Hemisphere, they've obviously released their winter gear. And then if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, they've released their summer gear. Nike is a brand that, that's been doing it. These guys have been doing it. I think a lot of the other sporting brands um, have sort of had to learn from Nike, whether they like it or not, you know, um, because they've just been pioneers and they've just been doing their thing and, and they just continue to innovate, you know, um, and offer, you know, products that are just not only high in material quality, but also high in um The technology, man, like if you run in Nike sneakers, like you can almost feel yourself, you know, floating, you know, so shout out to them. Um, And then obviously shout out to my protein, you know, a supplement brand that we've been associated, I think with them, we've been with them for about maybe three years now. So shout out to them. Um, Thank you for their products. Amazing, you know, whey isolate protein, uh, BCAAs, um, uh, multivitamins. And again, because the seasons are changing this side, man, it's it's getting colder. We're getting into the winter period now. And uh, just having the multivitamins has been really helpful. Um, and also pre-workouts, you know, um, with a busy schedule, man, that I have, you know, sometimes I feel demotivated, you know, in going to the gym and just using um, their products, you know, their pre-workouts and BCAAs. I get that energy boost I need for me to, you know, to work out well and perform well in the gym. So thank you to them for that. And then <clears throat> also our new sponsor um, or affiliate partner that we're working with is uh, Recover Sports Drink. You know, shout out to these guys, you know, 
when you work out, especially if um, if now if you're in the southern hemisphere and you're working out, it's obviously hot and you're sweating, you're losing a lot of water, you're losing a lot of salt on your body. These recovery drinks like Recover, um, basically isotonic drinks, they're very good in replenishing everything that your body loses. In fact, even if you're in the south, if, sorry, south, if you, even if you're in the northern hemisphere, chances are if you're going to the gym and you're running on the treadmill or you're doing like a CrossFit session or a high intensity workout that's going to require you to sweat a lot, chances are you're going to lose a lot of water and a lot of salt on your body as well. So again, this is where Recover comes in, where it replenishes everything so that you do not have, um, a, what's the name, um, a cramp. <laughs> you know, I told the story in the previous episode about my cramp experiences, man, and it is not fun, you know. So make sure you check these guys out. I'll also provide a link to their product as well um, that will be available on the description of the podcast. All right. So, yeah, man. So for this episode finale for the year, you know, I thought I'd give this whole recording thing another chance, like um, video recording, you know, and um, I opted to actually record outside of the um, Spotify for Podcasters platform. You know, I thought it would be a good idea to just, you know, use another platform, video um, recording platform, and then once I'm done, I'll upload it onto the Spotify for podcasters because man, that one was very, it was quite frustrating. You know, it was quite frustrating recording on that platform on the video. That's why I opted to go back to audio, but I do want to, you know, in 2025, one of the goals I have, you know, for the podcast for sports bears from an agent's perspective is I want, I want it to be a video podcast because I do have a desire to upload some of this content now, you know, come onto the YouTube platform because we've got, you know, we've got major streams on audio, you know, so now I want to parlay all the major audio streams um, onto the, uh, <clears throat> onto the YouTube platform as well, you know, and as much as yes, they always say YouTube is saturated. There are so many podcasts on there. It's just about, for me, it's about choosing my own lane. And um, again, it's for, the ones who rock with the podcast and maybe who would love who would love to find the podcast on YouTube as well. So it's not like I feel pressured that ooh, it has to work out. It has to work out. No, it's just that I want to have video content that's out um, because as much as we're a sports agency, you know, creating sporting content and, you know, sports marketing and everything it is part of the bigger vision. You know, it is part of the bigger vision. So 2025, we will be building up our YouTube channel. Um, obviously, we're starting from scratch when it comes to the YouTube space. So we're just going to take our time. Man. There's no rush. There's no rush. But um, I look forward to growing on that platform. Again, <laughs> as much as I know that um, getting on the video uh, podcasting, you know, fake, uh, how can I say, space, I do always have to make sure that I, you know, I'm cleanly shaven and I'm looking good and everything. Um, yeah, and if you're wondering, this is part of our um, sports apparel inspired by Japanese writing, Japanese kanji, you know, these Japanese characters called, um, yeah, Japanese kanji t-shirts by MAG Athlete Network. And you can check them out, um, you know, on our merch uh, website, which I will also drop on the description of the podcast, you know. So, yeah, man, we, we just working. we just working. Anyway, so getting started with the podcast. So today we're going to start off with a bit of, um, obviously, we're going to start off with a bit of rugby since, you know, the international games are taking place right now, autumn series, um, and they've been very interesting, <laughs> you know. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch all of them. Um, I did see little snippets, I think, of Ireland. Um, I think Ireland, they were playing against Argentina. I saw little snippets of it, and I saw, you know, Ireland score some amazing tries. You know, um, they definitely bounced back after they lost to New Zealand, and they were looking pretty good against the Argies, you know. So shout out to them. Again, 
I didn't really view the game in depth, so I don't really want to comment too much about it. The two games that I focused on this past uh, weekend, let me just adjust this a little bit. The two games I focused on this past weekend um, were actually South Africa versus England and also um, France versus New Zealand. Now, I missed the the New Zealand versus uh, France game because it was on way too late. But I woke up and I caught the highlights and, <laughs> man, all respect, with all due respect, you know, I respect the All Blacks. You know, there's so many players over the years that I idolized, you know, and that I tried to mimic my own rugby playing style, you know, with. But listen, you got to take your hat off to the French, man. The French are literally three in O against the All Blacks, meaning in three occasions that, you know, France has played against New Zealand, they haven't lost a game. You know, they haven't lost a game. Um, and I don't know, man. Like, I, I was just sitting, like, after I watched the game, because I rewatched the whole game, and it was it was really impressive just how France is just able to get under New Zealand's skin and dictate the bulk of the match, you know. But obviously, it was a back and forth. Both teams, they, you know, they, they literally go hard at each other. But... I was just impressed by just how much the French just do not stand back for the All Blacks. They don't give a crap about the fact that, you know, they are one of the most feared teams in world rugby. They don't give a crap about none of that. They literally front up when it comes to playing against New Zealand. Um, and it was a well-contested match, very well-contested. And for the French to edge New Zealand, you know, by one point, that was impressive. You know, that was really impressive. And I know it meant so much to the French, um, you know, the bench, the fans, everyone, because as soon as the final whistle went, they went ballistic, you know. <laughs> they went ballistic, man. And um, like I said, you got to take your hat off, you know, to the French rugby team. Um, I don't know how they do it, but they literally have become the bogey team for New Zealand, where New Zealand could literally be beating any team in the world. But as soon as they come up against the French, it's always a, mm, I don't know. It could go either way. It could go either way. But um, it, nonetheless, it was a great spectacle. I think both teams, they approach the game, you know, with, with um, how can I say, with a great level of respect for each other. But as soon as that whistle goes, man, yeah, I know. They go hard. They go hard. They they pull back no punches. So it, it was a great, yeah, it was a great game to watch. Very good game. So congratulations to the French. Viva la France. Viva le bleu. Viva le blanc. Viva le rouge. I'm talking about the flag now. The blue, the white, and the red. Yeah, congratulations to them, man. Um... And then obviously the next rugby game that I caught was the Springboks versus the England game, where again, because of all the mind ga mind games that were being you know that were going back and forth on social media, you know Maro Itoji saying this, and another England player saying that, you know South African player saying this, fans also getting involved, you know the media getting involved, so it was it was a good build up, you know in terms of creating hype around it. And obviously with all the history, you know, between South Africa and England, you know, you know, being former colonies and stuff like that. Yeah, that also comes into play. So any event against the Brits, you best believe that it's going to be a huge event. Um, and yeah, I mean, the game definitely lived up to its hype. Um, obviously with England scoring first, listen, that fly half of theirs, that Marcus Smith character, yeah, no, he he is him. He is him. You know, he he is definitely the future of England. I'm not sure of his age. I'll I'll do some research and I'll check how old he is. But yeah, he had an amazing game. You know, that 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 just that level of awareness where he was on his standoff position and then he just changed direction, boom, coming around and the scrum are feeding him and then creating that three on two overlap to score um, for the wing to go over for the try. That was, that was brilliant thinking, good precision, good um, precision 
and just vision from his side and just seeing, okay, where are these guys lacking? And then boom, he just went around. That was really good. And then obviously, South Africa as well retaliated with its own tries. The Grant Williams try was amazing. You know, it's been a while since we've seen, you know, scrum halves, um, you know, be that aggressive in terms of darting and, um, and going for a try. So that was, yeah, that was truly, that was great individual effort from Grant Williams. And um, yeah, he scored a brilliant try, man. That was, it was really good. And then obviously, Cheslin Kobe was one of the standout performers, you know. Um, his two tries that he scored were definitely crucial, you know, for the Springboks um, in having a chance to win. Um, and I actually commented on one of my friends, you know, on Facebook who talked about, I think that the best try, the try of the match was definitely the Damien Dialinda line break where he literally broke the tackle of two players and uh, freed up Chesden Colby to score his first try. And, you know, I think the reason why that try stands out so much as po possibly the try of the game is because of the fact that up until then, it seemed as if England was starting to get like a, how can I say, was starting to build momentum in taking control of the game, you know. But that line break that put Ches and Colby away for that try, to me, as it seemed when I was watching the game, that was a momentum shifter. Because after that Colby try, momentum then swung right back to the spring box as well. Because up until then, like I'm saying, it was back and forth, back and forth. And then up until a certain time of the game, it seemed as if England was starting to get the crowd behind them. I mean, that home ground advantage. So it seemed as though you know, they, they were starting to get, uh, the momentum was starting to shift their way. But after that Damien Dialinda line break to link up with Chase and Kobe for the try, that changed everything. Because from then on, South Africa got control of the game again, and then we just ran away with it. I mean, England tried to fight back and stuff like that, but we we had them. We had them. And then obviously, the Mani Le Bok, uh cross kick as well for Chesnin to catch the ball, sidestep his opposite wing, uh, fullback, not opposite winger, sidestep the fullback to go in for his second try. That was almost the one that sealed the deal, you know. So, yeah, man, Kobe continues to be phenomenal. He continues to be phenomenal. Um, and it's by no surprise that he is one of the players that has been nominated to be World Rugby Player of the Year. You know, I do wish that the award goes to him because this would vindicate so much if Kobe were to win the World Rugby Player of the Year award because this is a player who's who's endured quite a lot <clears throat> during his come up because coming up, you know, playing in the Western Province and the Stormers set up, Kobe experienced a lot of criticism, a lot of criticism where you had um, you know, rugby writers, you had the SA Rugby Media, and you had some of the people like pundits, you know, former coaches and former Springboks, you know, in Nas Puerta and obviously former coach in Nick Mallet, going on, on air, you know, when the show Boots and All was still there and stuff like that. These guys would go on the show and they would literally um, reiterate the fact that Cheslin Kobe needs to be shifted from wing to scrum off. He's too small to be playing out there. He's getting dominated. There's no future for him. Maybe he's too small for professional rugby. And you're like, hang on. In the past, we had players like your Brayton Pulses and stuff like that. And those guys had phenomenal careers. Gio Aplon and stuff. You know? Um, but yeah, what changed everything for Kobe was definitely... Again, I've talked about this in previous episodes, so I'm not going to go into depth about his come up. But the move he made when he went to go play in France, that was the best thing he ever did for himself. Because when he got to Toulouse, they just gave him the free reign that he needed to just be himself. And from there, that built up his confidence to have the coaching staff back him like that. That, listen, do your thing, you know. And uh, obviously... Rassi Rasmus having, you know, being the visionary that he is, he caught wind 
of how well this kid was performing overseas and he didn't waste time in bringing him um, into the Springbok system. And the rest, as they say, is history, you know. So for me personally, man, I don't want to lie. I would love to see um, Chesney and Kobe um, win this World Rugby Player of the Year award. I think he deserves it. He's definitely uh, been one of the standout performers for at least the past three or four seasons in a row. He has delivered consistent performances. He was one of the, you know, he was one of the reasons why the Springboks were able to advance in last year's quarterfinals in the Rugby World Cup. Like this kid has been putting in the performances, you know, and then, um, yeah, but it was, it was a great game to watch, man. Like, you know, these box, I love, I love watching the Springbok team play because they play such an expansive and exciting brand of rugby while also still keeping the basics intact. I mean, they still play their kicking game plan, game plan and stuff like that, but when they've got ball in hand, their first instinct is no longer to just fucking kick the ball away. These guys can run it from anywhere. And that's what you enjoy seeing. That's why they are such an enjoyable, uh, an enjoyable spectacle. I mean, they, the rugby product that they are currently producing is amazing. And again, it's because of the fact that they've been able to fuse it, fuse the balance between high risk, high reward rugby, you know, running rugby, while also maintaining, you know, playing the um, territorial game plan. And that's, that's what I've always wanted for the box because I've always been like, we have good runners, but we just didn't use them in the past. Play, you know, coaches were just way too conservative, but Rossi being Rossi and being the visionary that he is, knowing that we have such talented runners in South Africa, he's just decided that, you know what, strike a balance and let these guys be, you know, so credit to him, man. And before I get off the topic <clears throat> of the Springboks and stuff like that, we do have to mention the unsung hero of the Springbok rugby backline. This is a player who in the past was heavily criticized because it seemed like maybe at, at times he would hold on to the ball for too long and so forth and so forth. He's received his, um, you know, his fair share of criticism. But man, can we talk about the unsung hero that is Damien Dierlinde? You know, Damien Dierlinde, man, my respect for that man started when I saw him play here in Japan. You know, I realized that Damien is one of those guys. He's a big, he's a big time, he's a big game, big time player you know he's a big game big time player in those crucial moments in big games Damien Dierlinde is one of those guys that you can count on you know he makes big plays in big games though you need those type of players because again those are the kind of players that can shift the momentum for you at any time your team could be having a tough, you know, a tough day at the office. You guys could be having a tough game on the field and, it, and it'll just take one Damien Dierlinde moment. It could be a line break. It could be a big hit. It could be a steal on the ground. That's all it takes. And I saw him do that here in Japan for the Panasonic Wild Knights. I remember when they were playing in the, I think, in the semis. Yeah, I think that when they're playing in the semi quarters or semifinals, and it was a crucial moment in the game. And you just saw Damien Dialinda make a big hit, stand up quickly, make the steal, and the momentum had shifted towards the Panasonic Wild Knights. And they ended up winning that game to advance to the next stage. I'm just not certain if it was a semifinal or a quarterfinal. I'm not sure. But the point I'm trying to make is. I saw then that, that this guy, this he's, he's one of those guys you want to have in your team. And I swear to you, the day that he retires and he's no longer in a Bok jersey, they're going to miss him so much because he's that take charge kind of guy. You know, where he doesn't talk much. He just goes in. He does the horsework. 
and obviously because now he's getting older he's matured to know that if he makes a line break he doesn't have to try and sprint all the way to score the try now he can actually look for players around him and put them away players in a better position for them to score the tries he gets it now that actually that's what makes you look even better is when you're able to put players who are in better positions away to score tries that makes you the guy who created those tries the real superstar you know but he doesn't get a lot of media attention and it, it was actually Sonny Bill Williams who went you know who who posted on his twitter that part of the springbok success in the last 10 years in the backline especially has been due to the consistent performance of Damien Delinda he makes big hits he's a big guy tall guy he makes big hits he makes big carries he breaks the line and now he's at that mature stage of knowing that break the line look for players put guys away boom try time you know so give Damien Delinda his flowers man he's really he's come a long way and he's he's a stalwart in that bulk jersey for me there's no number 12 that I would play above him. No number 12. Until he retires, for me there is no inside center that is a big time player like Damien Delinda. You know. So shout out to him, man. Anyway. All right, so that's that's all the rugby we have for today. We were just talking about those two games, Viva la France and congratulations to the box. Um you know on their victory versus England you know viva la france and congratulations to them on their victory against new zealand um in yeah it's, it's been quite a year man it's been quite a year um and i'm just keen to just take a break and uh re-strategize rethink that okay how can i make the show more exciting obviously things to expect for 2025 apart from us you know starting to build on youtube as well is um definitely be on the lookout i will start reaching out for certain interviews like i said the goal is to at least try to have an interview at least once a month but we'll see how that goes and again it depends if people will want to come onto my show as well you know so <laughs> a lot of factors might be out of my hands but i will do my best to try get an interview um at least once a month but um yeah what else what what else can we say except for thank yous. Now it's just thank you guys, you know. Um and again, if you want to keep supporting the podcast, uh yeah, please go grab our merch, man. Um you know, we've got tons of stuff that's available. We work with Amazon, so your stuff is guaranteed to be delivered on time within a perfect time frame. So um yeah, you can shop for our merchandise on Amazon. I'll also make sure to drop the link to our merch and um Yeah. That's pretty much all she wrote for the year. Hell of a 2024. Uh now it's time to, you know, turn the focus and uh look to the transfer window. All right? But I mean, on socials, hopefully, I mean, I will be posting every now and then, especially on my LinkedIn. So, you can catch up with me on LinkedIn and stuff. So, um yeah, guys. I'll see you guys in 2025, all right? Take care. Excuse me. Take care of yourselves. Um take care of each other. You know, I hope you guys have a great holiday. Enjoy your Christmas. Enjoy your New Year's. Stay safe. You know, I know when in the southern hemisphere, especially where I'm from in South Africa, man, December is December is usually lit, you know. Um but yeah, take care of yourselves, you know. And um yeah, I'll be seeing you guys in 2025. All right whatever you're doing man whatever you're pursuing go at it full throttle have the time of your life enjoy yourself for doing it um and yeah let it fly let it fly all right so before i start babbling too much i'll see you guys in japanese we say otsukaresama desu which means see you next time all right take care